fireworks can be a blast to enjoy. But unfortunately for our men pin friends, that's not always the case. So in today's video, we're going to talk about 10 different ways that you can help your men pin get through this fireworks season. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Men Pin Nation. My name is Nate. If this is your first time with us, please consider subscribing below. Here at Men Pin Nation, we like to talk about everything for you and your miniature pincher so that you and your men pin can live their best life. Okay, tip number one. Make sure that you are exercising your dog. Now what does this mean? We talk about exercise every day, of course, but you need to make sure, and what we do with Blitz and Zoe is we take them out a couple days before and make sure we're getting extra, extra exercise in. Whew. Extra exercise in. And when you do that, you need to build that up for each day. And then that way, whenever it comes to the day of, you know, the actual fireworks blasting off, you can actually do that and you can have them more tired and they're more relaxed going into that evening. So especially before, but even the day of, you wanna make sure that you do multiple exercise, you know, take them on a walk or play with them, run around with them, kind of get them tired out before the festivities even kick off that night. Tip number two. For this tip, we need to make sure that we're getting their food and their water before the festivities kick off. So sometimes we make the mistake of assuming that that's the stuff that they're gonna want when it happens, but however, if our dogs are anxious, and I know with mine, that they're gonna refuse to eat potentially, they're gonna refuse to drink. So we don't run to running them being anxious, being you know potentially panting, but just refusing to drink because they are so scared. So make sure you feed and you get them plenty of water leading up to this, which also make sure that you need to take them out as well to, that they use the restroom plenty of time so you don't have to take them out when everything kicks off that night. But now we need to make sure that we have a little den set up for them. So if they have a kennel they use already, this is already a good place. So make sure that it's set up, it's nice and cozy, and that it's open. That is a key one. So one year we actually did not have it open, and all of a sudden Blitz took off, took off running, and he was trying to find his kennel, but the door was shut. Couldn't get into it, made it more anxious, more upset, and more uh, difficult to calm down. So make sure you, you know, get the kennel open. You know, you don't move its spots, that you keep it um, wherever it's at, it's the doors open. Uh, and something we like to do is potentially, if they're really scared, is, you know, actually putting them in there and covering it up. You know, just kind of putting a blanket over it or anything it will help help calm their nerves if they can't see everything around them. So some other accommodations that you're going to make as well is when it actually comes to the actual fireworks, you need to kind of try to drown out the noise. So if you have them in the kennel, you know, put a stereo on top or, you know, put your phone on top or anything else, you know, have a fan in the room. Some people, if you have a sound machine, anything that's going to help kind of drown out the noise, you know, the TV, something. Yep. Tip number four is that you need to make sure that you're treating them like dogs. So they're not humans. We treat them like our babies. We love them like our babies, but they're not our babies. They are animals. So you need to make sure that even though you may be speaking words or saying things, if your energy is anxious and afraid for them and feeling sorry for them, then they're going to feel that as well. Now, there's a some people talk about not wanting to pet them or even acknowledging them during something like this, which will help them or compared to if you do pet them and everything, it'll bring more attention to it. I like to think of more of a mesh of the two. So you want to make sure that you're not making it a huge deal. And once again, that your energy is not conveying that you're worried about them or you feel sorry for them, but also not on the flip side that you're just completely ignoring them. So petting them, you know, playing with them, kind of talking to them in a nice tone, those are all good. Just like we said, make sure that your energy is conveying, everything's okay, buddy, don't worry about it, compared to, like I said, scared and frightened and hope this is over soon. Okay, number five. So for tip number five here, we're talking a little bit about some of the things that you can use. So one of the big ones that's brought up is, um, they're called thunder shirts or other anxiety wraps. And so for these, they're good products that you can get and they pretty much work like a baby being swaddled and that kind of keeps them tight and kind of keeps their heart rate, helps it you know, be lower and it gives them that comfort of kind of being, you know, kind of snuggled up basically. But bonus tip here, you need to make sure, pro tip, you need to make sure that if it comes to using a thunder shirt, 
It's something that you have to do beforehand. So it's not like a device that you can give as the fireworks are happening or as they're starting to get anxious and you throw it on them and hope that it works. So make sure that before, you know, you kind of do it in little spurts. So they kind of understand that how to wear it and that they kind of wear it as it's leading up to it. You know, at least a half an hour before you put it on them, you know, they kind of get used to wearing it again and then it will kind of get them that nice feeling as the fireworks start to ramp up and start to show up. If you do it during it, like I said, it may work and you know it's worth a try, but it may not have near as much success as if you do it beforehand. Um, another one that people use is, they call it um, like a hoodie. So it's kind of just like the, the Thunder shirts which kind of wrap around you, but these are like a hoodie that go on top and um, same, same principle. Um, they just kind of more cover the ear sometimes, you know, which once again kind of dampen that noise and it kind of secures the head as well as um, some of them go all the way down to the body. Okay, so something else um, that people can use, you know, this is kind of moving on to tip number six is something more medication related. So there's a lot of different medications out there. I'm not a licensed veterinarian, so please speak with your local vet. But there are a lot of um, people nowadays using, you know, CBD oil. Some people use just like Benadryl. You know, I've, I've, I've used Benadryl in the past, just like um, half a capsule of, you know, children's Benadryl. Sometimes that will work as well. And just once again, kind of helping them just settle down. But definitely speak with your vet, see what they recommend. But usually there's a multiple kind of relaxers or something that will just slow them down and hopefully um, kind of you know, put them in that haze so they can get through it as well. Okay, so for this one, I think we're up to eight. Yeah. Tip number eight. So for this one, actually training your dog to um, be desensitized to fireworks. So whether they're a puppy, you know, you can start when they're a puppy, which obviously is always the best for most training, or even when they're an older dog. Either way, both of the both of them can be trained to actually help desensitize them to fireworks. So the way you're going to do this, right, is you're going to set up your phone, your computer, something that's going to be able to play like a fireworks show and you're gonna start at the low volume. And as they hear the booms and even see the bright lights, then you're gonna, you know, you're gonna give them a treat. You know, you're gonna do the association method where you're gonna give them the treat along with the fireworks. And then you're gonna slowly turn up the fireworks and give them a treat. You're gonna keep doing that and you're gonna slowly build it up. Now, if they start to get scared, or they start to get frightened, stop what you're doing, go back down. And you know, like we usually talk in some of the, our other videos, make sure that you then you know, go slower and try it again. But eventually, while it's not going to be perfect and it's not going to be as loud, but the louder you can eventually get it and the brighter you can get it for them, as you continue to show them that this is good, I get treats whenever this happens, will help them whenever it comes to actually enjoying a fireworks show. Okay, so tip num number nine and number 10, we're going to kind of combine together and it's talking about something that I never knew happened. Dogs actually on the 4th of July is the biggest day for them that they actually go missing. So the most dogs are reported missing on 4th of July, at least here in the United States. First step is make sure that you actually probably don't take them is the biggest recommendation to any type of fireworks show. But what happens is people think that they go outside, their pet ends up outside with them while they're enjoying a show. And many pets actually will take off and have jumped fences as, and just keep running because the fireworks don't stop. So make sure that you know you have them you know kind of set up like we've kind of talked about but if you do have to have them with you or you choose to have them with you make sure that you you know have them securely on a leash and that they are by your side and in your sight at all times and actually the best bet that you can do is if you don't already have them get them microchipped because that is the best way that anytime that they're gonna be able to find out if your pet goes missing but especially on fourth of july usually the monday tuesday after if you talk to almost any vet, that is some of the biggest calls they get is, you know, lost pets, um, lost dogs and other pets as well in order for them to match up their microchips. And obviously the ones that have them, they're able to be back with their owners a lot sooner and a lot more certain that they do get back than if they're not microchipped. So if you haven't looked into microchipping, we, bo we microchip both of ours and it's definitely, um, luckily we have not been able to have to worry about it as of now, but make sure that you um, do that. Highly, highly recommend it. Um, get, look into it. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a subscribe and like, and also check out this video over here where we talk about five potty training mistakes that you need to make sure that you potentially could be making and how to avoid them. 
So check that out right here. Like I said, we'll link it right over here. See you next time, guys.